We're going to be solving this problem that's towards the back of your chapter two notes where it says in class, let's run a chi-square test on some of Mendel's data. It ends up printing on page eight when I have things formatted in my notes. If you change your page numbers, it might not be on that page, but it's towards the very end. Um, the first thing that we want to do is write down what we know from the problem. And so in the problem, it tells us that Mendel was going to be crossing a plant that was hybrid for yellow peas, and he ended up producing 6,022 plants that had yellow peas and then 2,001 plants that had green peas. So we're just gonna write that in the table, that's our observed data, and we're gonna to need to total that because this total is gonna come back to us a little bit later on. Once we have that written down, the next thing that we're gonna to have to do is actually solve this to figure out what would we expect to see um, based on Mendel's laws of segregation and independent assortment and all of those things. So when you're solving a genetics problem, the first thing I always recommend you do is write your code. So based on what the problem says, big Y is gonna be yellow seeds, little y is going to be green seeds. Since he crossed a plant that was hybrid, hybrid was Mendel's term for it was going to be heterozygous, and so that means that our parent plant is going to be heterozygous, one dominant yellow, one recessive green. Since he's allowing that plant to self-fertilize, it means that plant is going to be both the mother and the father. So I'm going to write the father stuff up there in blue just to kind of make sure you can differentiate those. And then she's also going to be the mom because plants can do that. Once you know what your parent's genotype is, the next step is to figure out what your gametes are. Your gametes are gonna have half the letters that your parent plant had. So since our parents have two letters, that means each gamete can only have one letter in it. That goes back to meiosis and you only give your kids half of your genes whenever you make your gametes. So if this is the dad side, that means it's gonna make sperm. Yes, plants do make sperm. And so half of this guy's sperm are gonna have a big Y and then half of his sperm are gonna have a little Y. On the female side, we've got the same thing going on, only she's making eggs. And so half of her eggs have a big Y, half of her eggs have a little Y. Once you figure out what your gametes are from there, you can put it into your Punnett square. Your Punnett square needs to be as big as your gametes tell you they need to be. So we need a two by two box in order to solve this one. So we're gonna take the gametes from dad and we're gonna put them up here. Then we take the gametes from mom and we put them on the side. From there, all the letters on top have to go into every box below them. So this big Y is gonna go here and here. That little Y is gonna go there and there. It really doesn't matter where you put the letters in the boxes. These letters are gonna go into all the boxes that are beside them. So this big Y is gonna go here and here. This little Y is gonna go here and here. From there, we can figure out what our ratios are, and we're really only gonna be concerned with phenotypic ratio, which is what does something look like. And so this plant, this plant, and this plant are all gonna end up being yellow. That ends up being 75% are gonna be yellow. And then we've got this guy off over here that's green, so we have 25% are expected to be green. All of that, was to help us figure out what we're gonna put over here in the expected column. And so the next step is we have to do math based on this total that we have. Out of this number that Mendel had actually bred, we expect 75% of those to actually be yellow. So we're gonna do 0.75 times 8,023. And that's what we expect the number to be for yellow. Um, the number for that one is going to be 6,017. And then to figure out how many we expected to be green, it's 0.25 times 8,023. And that tells us that 2,006 of them are expected to be green. Um, if we do that math, it ends up being the same. That just tells us that we did our math correctly. So now we have our observed values from the problem. We have our expected pro uh, values based on we solved the problem and this is what we expect to see based on Mendel's rules. So now we have everything that we need in order for us to go ahead and solve for chi-squared because you need observed minus expected squared over expected. So let me erase this side and then we'll get started on the chi-squared part of this problem. Okay, you have to do the sum of these for each one of the expected outcomes, which we have two expected outcomes. We expect some yellow ones and we expect some green ones. Let's go ahead and do the yellow ones first. And so we have the observed value of 6,022 minus the expected value of 6,017. We're gonna square that. And then we're gonna put that over our expected value, which is 6,017. 
Then we also have to figure that out for the green one off down there. So our observed value is 2001. We expected 2006. We got to square that and we have to put that over the expected of 2006. From there, it's a matter of punching those numbers into your calculator. What the top value is going to give you is 0 0.00415. And then what the bottom value is going to give you is 0 0.0125. Now, the sigma that was at the beginning of this means that we have to sum for each one of those expected outcomes. And so we're just going to add that number to that number to get our final chi-square value in this case. And so those end up equaling 0 0.0166. Next, we have to come back up over here and we have to figure out our degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is the number of categories that you have minus one. So we had two categories, yellow and green, minus one means we're going to have one degree of freedom. From there, you have to look up in the chart, which I'm always going to give you what the values are supposed to be. Your book has a chart someplace like this. But our p-value, or our critical value, for one degree of freedom is 3.841. Then what we do is we compare the value that we found to our p-value, and if this value is less than the p-value given in the chart, that means you accept this hypothesis, which the hypothesis in this case was, does, it, does this fit with the law of segregation? So, Yes, we support the law of segregation. And then just to reiterate, the reason why we're doing that is because our chi-square value is less than our p-value. And then just to write those in there, that was our chi-square value, and that was less than the p-value. Now, if we were to do all of our calculations, and instead of getting this number, our p-value had been 4.2, because that's greater than this, we would reject that hypothesis and say that this data does not support the idea, or said another way, this data rejects the law of segregation because it doesn't match with what we expected to see. So that's how you solve a basic genetics problem, and then that's how you use chi-square to help you figure out whether or not it supports Mendel's laws that he came up with way back when. I hope that helps you try to figure out what's going on in chapter two. Good luck.